Welcome to the Land Cave, where we're living as nerds. I'm Patrick, joined by Owen. Hello! Yeah, we're sitting here talking gaming news, video games, all kinds of things that game in the night. Uh, and Xbox. some Xbox, lots of Xbox uh, uh, today. So we're, the Xbox July event just happened, the Xbox Series X event just happened, where we still didn't get a price. Um, I, yeah. you, you called it. I was like, they got to drop the price. You called it. You're like, nope, nope not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> not at all. There, I think I think we're, I think at this point now we're poised for middle August. I'm going. Yeah. Here we go. Let's see. August. What's today? So I have a calendar. Today's the so 23rd. We, we got to get a day of the week. All right. So, August 7th. Wow. We will get one of the companies. Okay. August 7th, one of them. I don't know which one. Yeah. And then the next one will be that following Monday. So that's the 10th. Okay. So August 7th and 10th. Be ready for it. I don't. I have no context for that <laughs> prediction whatsoever. Yeah, but you know what? Happen. What you just said has just as much weight to it as like everybody else who's guessing stuff on the internet right now. Um, I, I've got a, like a news feed that pops up on my Android phone where it's like, you know, it, it knows what I like, right? Because because it's always tracking you. It's always watching. And it was like, here's why the PlayStation 5 is blah, blah, blah. And it was some completely outlandish, dumb article that had really no weight to it. But somehow enough people are, it, people are that interested in these new consoles that they'll click whatever it is. I don't mind being outlandish or dumb, you know. Just uh, just just plug me into your news feed. So it's like you know, you're 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 thinking throughout the day. Yeah. You're sitting there and you're like, huh? And then all of a sudden, it's like Owen oh, just decided that PlayStation's going to do this. Yeah. I'm just going to send. We I'm just going to send those those to your your phone. I'm just going <laughs> to will it. You, will it. You kind of do that anyways. I mean, you send That's me true. you send me messages. On, yeah, because obviously doing the show and everything and being friends anyways. Like that, we we send each other stuff. You send me stuff quicker <laughs> than than anybody else. Um, and it's either something I ha- I haven't seen or something I just saw. Um, but yeah, even if we weren't doing the show, like we say this all the time, if we weren't doing the show, we'd be talking gaming, doing pretty much the same thing anyways, without the cameras on. Um, this is this is how this is how we do it. This is we're living as nerds, as you can tell by our backgrounds and by those wonderful friends things over there. I mean, who else? Sorry, you, you, you stuck the camera on me, and I was sharing. <laughs> I was sharing out our post right, right now, so I look like a dummy. No, no, you're good. <laughs> I was I was just gonna say, you know, all our, our all of our figures and stuff like that. And I just uh, I've been talking about Owen about this a lot. For those of you who are watching, I've got two consoles now mounted to the wall. Uh, I'm gonna get one or two more mounted to the wall uh, soon. Um, you mount those consoles. I mount, you mount them. them good. Man, they are they are on there hard. Uh, I'm I'm really happy about it though. Like it's like it's kind of tough away and uh and i i think i sent, i was about to send you a video of it and i'll do it another time but the routing to make sure that all of it is going to work properly um it's not that complicated but it sounds it went, once you get it all together you're like this is ridiculous but it works it works yeah, I can't complain. The, the problem with it is is now you've got me <laughs> wanting it Especially because my PS4 is going to move in here. Yeah. It's going to be def- it's because I'm definitely going to be needing it for Ex Libris, and mm-hmm. I want it. You know, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to display it in here because I would have to get a really long HDMI cable sure. to go all the way over here. But I I want it now. I want to see it. Sure. I want to I want to look at the PS4 Pro. Yeah. In its glory okay, it's because it's pretty. definitely my favorite console of oh, all man. time at this point. It's an amazing console, and I will say it's not just that they're like, oh look, cool, they're on the wall. They're not taking up space like on a desk, on an entertainment center, whatever. Uh, by the way, these are these are coming your way if you want them. Uh, these are for P- PS4 Pro. Uh, mounts Sweet. three they're all 3d printed uh my buddy ronnie uh hooked me up with those um and uh yeah so the, if you get them online it's like a large metal plate that you secure into the wall and yeah these you do visibly see the plastic but really it's it's subtle uh the switch one's the only one that's bulky this one's subtle uh this one's I mean, even on the camera i can't see it yeah so. the switch one you can this is there's like a little piece right here that you can kind of see bulge out and there's a little notch right there but honestly they're not really obtrusive and uh it's so cheap the ones online i was seeing between 25 and 40 bucks for ps4 pro so i'm gonna send these your way one way or another uh so cool. when you do get your ps4 pro in that in that room you can mount it or you know i figured at least try it out because they're like I said, they're they're dirt cheap to be able to do this. It's good stuff. I sent, I sent Patrick a message last night. I'm like, you know, I think I can mount. Yeah, 
you know, just, it's, just it's, out, of, out of the blue. <laughs> I was just looking at my wall. I'm like, you know, I can mount. Yeah. It, well, I mean, I, I, I've seen people do it before. You mentioned it. And the more that I thought about it, I was like, yeah, I don't have to clutter up my desk. My desk is cluttered enough. I'm about to do a big deep clean in here, but like, I don't have to worry about the wires. These wires are going to be uh, nicely uh, cable managed soon. Uh, And I'm gonna get a couple more consoles up there, putting the Wii U up there so I can play me some some Zelda, uh, because I got Wind Waker and some others that I wanna go back and play. So the Wii U will go up there and then the PS4 will go back there when, when the PS5 comes out, PS4 goes in here, which is what you're doing with your PS5, right? Yeah. When you get your PS5. And yeah, and that's another reason to to definitely follow us on Facebook if you're mm-hmm. not. I know that we have um, a lot of SoundCloud listeners and stuff, and we appreciate you. But if you like a little uh, live gameplay, uh, Patrick plays on Saturdays. I play a little bit during the week. Patrick's been playing uh, some more uh, beta stuff as well. Mm-hmm. And as we, as we get these setups even more um beautiful it's like how do i not come in here and play video games and yeah. if i'm going to play video games i should probably play and let the land cl- land cave watch so, you yeah know, just, it's, uh, it's always follow us here yeah and some life life uh lessons for you just set yourself up for success if you set yourself up for success you get everything ready you the, it, it makes it easier and that's just not for just video games just everything in life that's you 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 help help future self out uh, instead of uh, screwing them over and procrastinating, that's what I say. As a as a really bad procrastinator, that's what I say. Do you want to know who's like setting themselves up for success? Who that? Video game companies oh, yeah, in they 2020, are. dude. Because they've spent, we have spent uh, video game spending total 1.2 billion dollars. So. I, I legit, I legit had a had a. Uh, um, I, I've got a, a lot of stories. June, by the way, just the month, only of June, the month yeah. of June. That's what I was going to say. I was going to guess it was only a month or two months. I legit had a had a conversation with my handyman uh, earlier this week. He's doing some work f- uh, for me, and thankfully it's all done. Um, but he didn't understand like how big gaming is. Right, he's fifty eight. And he was like, "Oh, you play games? Yeah, my son plays games, and like it, it, it just it 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 doesn't it didn't register to him how much money was being made." And I said, "You know, it's considerably more than Hollywood now." And he laughed as if I was to tell him, you know, something completely outlandish like green beans are now a million dollars. Like that was the kind of laugh that he gave me. And then he and I'm like, "Dude, look it up on your phone." He pulls out his phone, looks it up and starts like cursing to himself like he was so (laughs) surprised he he's been belittling this thing because he's like you know my son plays it and this other person plays it and i didn't think it was that i just thought it was you know it was something people did every now and then he didn't realize like oh no it's it's everybody who who grew up playing games because he didn't grow up playing games so the people who like his son's age and and uh and older his son's a little younger than me so his son's age and older we grew up playing games and we're playing games we're we're teaching our kids how to play games um i i've seen i keep seeing like uh, uh videos on tiktok and other places where like it's a it's a it's a parent and their kid playing like mario kart or something and i'm like that's multi-generational now uh the if you go back in the first generation of uh, video games hardly anybody played the first generation of video games until when you get to to pong and atari but now it's ingrained in multiple generations of people that are all wanting to do this as a pastime. Uh, whether and I, I want to put Last of Us on here because talk about like art, talk about blockbuster, uh, giant, huge uh, uh, budget, and mm. I and selling pretty well too. I will say it did drop off by the way uh, after the first sales, which a lot of them do. It dropped off a little steeper than others, sure. so a lot of people were like going, "Yeah, we told them," but honestly. Uh- Honestly, it's a it's it's a well made game graphically, gameplay wise. Um, this is amazing. I will say I'm really loving uh, Ghost of Tsushima. By the way, I've played about an oh, really? uh, I played uh, about an hour and a half or so of it. I'm going to be playing more this weekend. Um, I'm liking it. Uh, I will say that maybe it didn't click with me that I was like this this gameplay is probably going to be a lot like Assassin's Creed. So like I described it to Whitney because of this the store, first story trailer is all that I had seen at the time I told her about it. And I said, sure. this is, this is red dead samurai. And she was like, okay, that's cool. And she started playing yeah. it and she's like, this is assassin's creed. Yeah. It's, assassin's it's not creed. bad. 
<laughs> and good I, job on good job on her part calling it though. Oh, she yeah. was hundred percent right. In, immediately, like, it, and she was just having this moment where she's like, "It's not bad. It's just this is Red Dead because she she just loves Red Dead so much." So I just thought it was hilarious how um, she remembered what I said like six months ago or whatever, and then she was like, "This isn't what I thought it was. This is a different game. Um, I'm liking it. Uh, I love the the choices that you can make." Uh, in regards to audio and uh, audio and visuals in it are pretty cool and making it more um, like the Kurosawa mode, which is like Japanese audio uh, and English subtitles and so forth. I thought that was really cool. To me, it's a minimal at this point, but it was really cool. I'm really yeah. excited to see how well it's doing because uh, it reviewed decently well, which was expected. It's a first party game and everything. It got It's in the 8.5s, but I just saw so many people just talking about how pretty the game was how fun it was uh it seems to be decently lengthy um and you know we were talking about the last of us 2 being like the swan song uh of the ps4 but really ghost is the is the final swan song even if even if last of us 2 is, is rated higher and everything like as far as we know anyway we don't know 100 percent sure but relatively positive yeah. this is the last first party exclusive game yes. that's going to be coming to PS4 and I'm really happy to see how well it was received not just because I love my console again I, I, I decided uh, 10 minutes ago that PS4 is my favorite console of all time uh, that just kind of came to me and it, it's absolutely true but I'm happy for, for Sucker Punch I'm just happy I'm so happy with how this generation has been and we should really look into talking about that um, you know maybe maybe around when PS5 is about to launch yeah. just kind of go through our PS4 like favorites but this this console has meant so much to my life in terms of just my, my adult mm -hmm. Uh, adulthood like it really took me into a, a new yeah. stage and was there along you know you can kind of think about I don't know if you ever think about consoles that way I like I, I think of where the SNES was where I was in like elementary and middle school I think of the 360 finishing high school stuff like that yeah um, PS4 has been a lot and I'm glad that that ghosts uh, is is being well received for that reason the fact that the last like sony game on there didn't bomb or yeah, anything like, yeah. i was honestly worried just because it came right after the last of us that's rough and it seems to be palate cleansing for a lot of people like it still doesn't seem like the most like happy-go-lucky game or anything but it's so it's so beautiful and like there's so so many chill moments i was watching a couple streams on it and there, it's it's a pretty game it's yeah. so pretty to just watch people wander around that world it, it really is the the story what i've experienced of it so far i've i've really enjoyed in a way um that i think maybe it's maybe it's Part of it is the is not only the setting but the tone. Um, it's very respectful. It's very respectful, in my opinion, um, to uh, try not not one hundred percent historical accuracy, but pretty darn close when it comes to uh, uh, when it comes to behavior, when it comes to uh, the setting, comes the architecture, just everything. I could gush about that game uh, quite a bit. Uh, we can also gush about some Zelda, and we had a uh, we had a Nintendo uh, Direct just randomly pop up. I realized it like twenty minutes beforehand. What? How about you? I can't. I, did you have that on your calendar? Because I totally spaced it. I well, I have the uh, Summer Game Fest calendar plugged in, gotcha. and so ev literally everything that Jeff Keighley talks about it all. I need to do uh, that. I get it. I get a little reminder. Like yeah. there was a Pokemon Go event today that I didn't watch, but even still, it popped up on my thing. So I, I knew about it um, from that sense. This game, uh, Cadence of High Rule, that for those who aren't watching, is being shown right now. Yes. It's always going to hold a special place in my heart. I don't know if you knew this or not, but me and uh, the wife literally beat this game while she was probably having like some contractions. Like she went into labor later that night, but we beat that. I we beat this that. game that day. I uh, didn't know that. Yeah. And then, and then later went to the hospital that night. Uh, so it's always going to be special to me for, for that reason. And so it's cool that it's getting a bunch of new songs added yeah. uh, and some Remixes new characters. And, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's fun to see a, an indie game like this uh, supported so well. Um, I mean, I, you don't see Zelda or any first party Nintendo characters show up in other games. So it, it took a lot for them to get the IP and man, they did yeah. it. They did it right. They totally yeah, did it job. right. Yeah. It's a great game. 
really did. Um, in addition to that, we we got the the uh, announcement. Uh, at least I believe it was the announcement for Rogue Company. I hadn't heard of this before. Um, I was underwhelmed by this. I don't know about you. Um, I know, and I forgot to write it down here. My my setup's a little a uh, little limited right now. But uh, the company that that uh, is doing Rogue Company it did what is Smite and a few other free to play. So they're they're good and successful at what they do. But mm -hmm. I feel like the the ecosystem that they're trying to launch into, or maybe ecosystem is the wrong uh, term for it, their competition is that of, of games that people just sit and play, and they don't play, they don't jump from game to game other than to check out the new hotness and then jump back if they don't like it. And mm -hmm. I feel like if this doesn't if this doesn't knock it off out of the park, it's just going to be another failure. That's how. The, this uh, uh, BR and as well as team shooters team to be see, uh, tend to be like a flash in the pan. Either people love them or they absolutely hate them, and they'll go back to their uh, their old favorites. That's just how I feel about it, at least. I don't know about you. I mean, I don't really care about this game in the sense because uh, it's we're just not big multiplayer player of games these days but what i did think was cool is, that is worth noting anyway is that um it's day and date across platform cross play yes. across progression that is a good thing that means you can play it on it's going to be on uh switch was what this was announced on but it's mm -hmm. going to be on ps4 xbox one switch windows via the epic game store all cross play all cross progression so that means you can own it on anything and log in i think that is good that's great yes. um other than that it's third person which holds it back in my opinion i don't think um third person is a very well played mode outside of fortnite um mm -hmm. fortnite's still third person but every other game in this genre like this this uh I think I want to call, I want to call it like arena, but maybe it's not. But I know that it's small matches. It's like four v four and two v two. Sure, so that's first person to me, and so it it really depends on like what it's going to cost when it comes out. If it's free to play, I think that there's a chance that it could make it because people people do like that casual shooter, right? And if it is free, again, I don't know. I, I don't know at all. I haven't looked into it yeah. enough to know if it's going to cost money or not. Um, but if it doesn't. I think there's a chance because of the, that cross play there's at least multiple avenues for yes. people to come in no i i 100 agree on that that's one thing that i do like about it and it gives it an advantage as i feel like we are in a world now where cross play cross play should be the standard we are we're we're, we're going towards um uh, in regards to cross progression uh, uh cross play is is i know cross play can be um I almost see political, right? Because keyboard and mouse is obviously better than the controller. Um, but I feel like cross progression, if someone wants to play it on PC, wants to play it on console, which is what Xbox is really pushing towards, uh, I feel like that should be what we what we go towards. Um, and I'll talk more about that uh, here in a bit. Um, we also, this is part of the Nintendo Direct still, by the way, we got WWE Battlegrounds, which uh, I really liked your, uh, your description of this. Uh, it was a Blitz. Uh, did you say Blitz, right? Sorry, this is... Uh, yeah. yeah, sorry. I was, I'm, I'm trying to like tr toggle between this. this. is a different setup for me. Um, yeah, basically Blitz, uh, WWE. Um, I've... I'll probably... I mean, I'll, I kind of want to try it out. Um, I prefer wrestling games that are more as accurate as we can go to what you would see. And this is obviously nowhere near accurate. You're throwing people into, into uh, alligators and all kinds of stuff. But... Uh, at the same time, it it fits. It fits WWE. They're that uh, outlandish. Um, I won't take too much time on here, but if you saw what happened at this past pay per view, you know how crazy and stupid and outlandish it gets nowadays. Uh, if you know what I mean. And I do not know what you mean. Uh, <laughs> I won't go on this. I'll, I'll talk to you about it later because it's like okay. it's it's. It would take me too. It would take me too long. And um, our viewers aren't. I don't think are wanting to talk about that. Uh, Semigami Tensei, by the uh, though, our viewers might be interested. I think they'll be interested in that. I've not played any of these games. I keep hearing good cool. things about them, and I and and it's one of those series that I'm. I really don't know why I've not gotten into, because it seems like 
It seems like I'd like it. I don't know. Have you played any? I've heard, uh, I mean, I played the spin-off Persona. Uh, cause, so Persona 5 outside of Japan is generally known as like Shin Megami Tensei Persona. And so it's the same universe. And I was talking to some, some bigger fans about it uh, than I am, because I, too, have never played a sure. Shin Megami Tensei. And I was like, so is it like Final Fantasy in that sense, where it's like you know, you kind of just have the banner of Shin Megami Tensei and you can kind of have whatever game under it. And they were like, yeah, that's a good way to think about okay. it. So think about another um, RPG series. This one is made by Atlas instead of mm -hmm. uh, a square. And um, what I'm told about uh, Tensei versus uh, like a Persona is that it's a little bit darker. Uh, this than is darker than Persona? Persona? Correct. Like Persona is a little bit more comedic in it, and okay. this is less comedic. And then I've heard that some of the uh, translations, not the word I'm looking for. What's the word I'm looking for? Like the localization. There localization. We go. Okay. It has not been great. Okay. Uh, over the years, but everybody that I talk to is super excited that we get one the HD remaster of this one. This game came out a long time ago on mm -hmm. PS2. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we get that next year, but then even bigger news was that apparently this has never been done before by Atlas. They're releasing Shimagami Tensei Five around the world yeah. at the same time. So everywhere gets it, and that didn't even happen with like Persona Five. Persona Five came out in Japan first, uh, and then came out to this to the West later. This game is launching worldwide all at the same time that's a completely new thing and everybody that i talked to that likes this series was excited about that oh, so sure. if you like jrpgs if you like atlas you know please be excited i i i'm thinking about checking out um three mm -hmm. just because it's probably hopefully going to be cheaper before i'm ready to like dive into a five sure um so we'll see how it goes, but you know, I I think anytime we get uh, any of these RPG series that have been around for a long time and getting them remastered and, and pushed out, I'm mm -hmm. always excited about that. For even if I'm you know not going to play it personally. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Um, I I every time I start to say something like this, I think of Zoolander. By the way, and the uh, the the quote of like I'm a big fan of Sting. I don't like his music, but the fact that, like, that's how I feel about these where I'm like, I haven't played them, but the fact that people like that they continue to exist, I think is really cool for the people who, who enjoy it. It's like, I'm glad I'm happy for you. Uh, this is a series that I do need to check out though. I've not, I've barely played a persona game, uh, but I feel like this may, uh, this may resonate with me. Um, we're kind of trans going kind of quick here because there's a lot go we're going through. So we're going to kind of go through the, uh, the next bit, uh, quick as well as we go into um, into the Day of the Devs, Jeff Keighley again bringing us uh, a lot of developers, a lot of indie stuff, Bug Snacks performance going on here. Uh, and this is, uh, sorry, uh, Caro Caro Bonito uh, that did the theme. Um, most of the trailers, in my opinion, uh, first of all, a lot of the trailers I had already recognized and the others I felt like it was just an overload. It was a uh, 45 minutes, if I'm not mistaken. And I want to say there were like 30 some games. It was so much. I'm probably, I'm probably exaggerating there, but the fact that we go through, uh, all these different games and afterwards we're told, we're not told a release date. We're just told, Hey, put this in your wish list on steam or, you know, something to that effect or, or look forward to more news soon. And a lot of these developers soon may mean like, a year and a half or two years and for mm -hmm. a small developer that may lose the momentum i mean it's cool that they were featured but i felt kind of bad there were so many that i felt bad for the um i felt bad for the smaller ones like uh bug snacks was on there overcooked um is getting a a, a collection uh released and i'm like that's cool i know what that is and then you go into a bunch of other games that to me, it just kind of bled together or it was a lot of noise. Um, mm -hmm. And I totally called this right before right before we started here, um, right before we started streaming, Owen said there was one game he was looking forward to out of the whole thing. And I totally called it because I had it queued up for you for <laughs> I Am Dead. Um, I was like art style it's quirky it's not too it's not too macabre but it's kind of it's kind of weird but creative 
this game seems yeah. so creative and i was like this this is totally up my one's alley at this at this point um honestly i can't even completely explain the game like i because i i was only being able to watch it loosely sure. but it seemed kind of like you get to like occupy like different objects mm -hmm. and kind of figure out why things are still around and and maybe lingering yeah. again i didn't look deep enough into it i was like watching briefly but like there's just something about yeah. the aesthetic that just stuck right out yeah. to me i was like okay well the aesthetic the fact that it's it's um you know you you tend to like you tend to like the uh the hyper not not really cartoony but like you you like that but you also you like um a good story and it seemed like the mystery of these objects and stuff is kind of unraveling a story um yeah. but it doesn't seem like something it's not going to be punishing it's going to be something that's going to be a nice experience um and a lot of games that's what you need you just need an experience uh, um so yeah i don't know that a, the hyper you know, I've, you know there's a thing about every time you you've heard me say it time mm -hmm. and time again if i think the game is cute yeah there's a chance I'm going to like the game. This game looks cute. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, you did totally call it because that this is out of all of it. Um, you know, Bug Snacks I was kind of interested in before, and I'm probably still going to be checking it out anyway. But, like, this whole event, um, I felt a little bad, like you said. The mm -hmm. reason why I felt bad, though, is because normally what would be happening is, like, all, all these games would be on, like, an E3 floor at, like, a table or something, and, like, people would be, like stopping by and checking them out yes. when they weren't sitting in line for other stuff mm -hmm. and we would probably hear about some game like an i am dead sure. talking about how cool it was and in this case like these devs are talking about it and it's not their fault or anything they're not trained to talk about it i'm trained to talk for a living and mm -hmm. these are people who are making the game yes. trying to like talk about it and they don't they don't have that hype level or anything and so it's one of those things where you would need to be on a show floor at a pax or at an e3 you walk by and you're like hey i am dead that's a cool title like oh that's some cute art let's mm -hmm. check this mm -hmm. out you play it and all of a sudden you're writing a story on ign or whatever about it and that that's not happening this year yeah and so that's where i feel bad is that this is what we're getting the day of the devs has been around for a while by yes. the way so i'm not knocking day of the devs but these I, I feel like we would have heard about some of these games already and in this case we haven't yeah no i'd, I'd agree um some of the games that i'm really looking forward to i had not heard of this so i i, I believe it's an expansion to a game if i'm not mistaken i'm gonna be completely wrong uh but blasphemous stir of dawn i blasphemous is out yeah, on sale right yeah. now so i'm gonna have to grab this um for uh, twelve dollars on Switch, love the artwork. So it, that's perfect because it's on because it's on Switch. I I wasn't sure if this was a, a remaster or release of something that had previously been on Steam. So I'll be honest, I didn't know. But immediately taken uh, with the almost like a like a cast a Castlevania, but like weird macabre. Some of the um, the the art style is this. Uh, it reminds me of uh, some of the uh pc games when it was like they're starting to get a little bit of animation going on other than just pixel art so you have that blend of pixels and you have that kind of motion stuff from the background characters um i i i was i was completely floored uh at this because i thought uh bringing castlevania almost like cuphead did right it's like let's take this uh this genre that that is a thing and let's mash it up with something else i i absolutely love it it's from what i know of the game it's not easy okay uh so expect that you like that a little more than i do and so expect castlevania like mm -hmm. with like not necessarily souls element but just expect that that difficulty sure. level and if and i'm not so, playing, yeah and yes. i will say i am at the point now where i don't do it all i used to like be fine just playing those games all the time but now i have to if I'm not in the right mindset, I'm like, I can't, I can't do it. Uh, yeah. And I'll play a game like Dreamscaper at that point, because I thought this didn't seem like that punishing. Um, I like the idea of, uh, of the story in the real life, as well as battling in the dream world. It reminded me of Catherine a lot, except um, obviously this one's easier to, uh, you know, e uh, sorry, what's, how should I say this? 
it is uh, for more for all ages or more widespread of ages as opposed to adults only. For <laughs> Catherine tends to tends to look look very adult. Um, I don't know how the, exactly if the combat's going to be rewarding, but I like that blend of. Um, of intrigue and story in these two worlds of bouncing between those a little bit of puzzles, a little bit of, uh, action, uh, stuff. So I'm, I'm down for this one. This is, this is another one that's on my list. I did not see it. So okay. because of your enthusiasm, I will have to, to check it out. It seemed, it seemed like up our alley. Uh, again, we are going fast apologies here, but I feel like a lot of this, we don't need to talk about it a lot, but final fantasy seven part two, is being worked on and i'm happy about that it fixes. yeah we already knew obviously that it was being worked yes. on but what we are now in is that the last time that we talked about this game was that it was in like pre-development kind of and now nomura uh who's the director uh, and if you don't know nomura that he directed office 7 remake he directed kingdom, kingdom hearts, hearts yeah uh, he directed a lot of stuff um and so is it it's in full development um there's still a lot of questions about kind of the ending and so on that we don't really need to go into here we actually talked about final mm -hmm. fantasy 7 uh you know, back in our history that's right uh, and pull that one up we talked about the game a lot but in terms of how much they're going to change or not um so we're you know that'll obviously still be curious but i just threw it in there because it has been like officially said like COVID has slowed down their development process but they are now Full swing, full Let's swing, go. full swing. And he was quoted as saying he wants it out as soon as possible. That does not mean later this year. People, people are already tweeting stuff like that. And I'm like, like 2024 instead of 2025. That's exactly what. Yeah, I, I would love, I would love for there to be a Final Fantasy VII remake or something like this every year. And people were like, well, you can have Assassin's Creed every year. Why can't you do this? Because those are different teams. This is the same mm -hmm. team working on each part. Um, you could put more money in it, but you're going to stretch the team thinner, or you're going to add multiple directors to do every other project. And when you do something like that, or you outsource a good amount of it, then you have situations like Aliens, Colonial Marines, or Duke Nukem Forever, where it, it's not as cohesive and it's not as quality. So take the time and get it done i hope it's i hope it's 2022 as much as i'd love for it to be 2021 2022 i can wait for that i can wait for that i already assumed i think we talked about this mm -hmm. before i you know i'm not expecting it anytime soon i i think that it should be sooner yes than later because a final like square has the money yes. you should be able to hire a big team for this um i think they spent enough time they spent uh, almost five years on seven remake mm -hmm. and so hopefully they should have the world build hopefully they have yes. things that they can reuse from the first game i know that we're crossing console gens now but you know it looked amazing it looked fantastic yeah. there were some texture problems and everything that everybody could use to be updating where you can tell they yeah. still weren't done with the game but i didn't care you know so hopefully there's enough there to where it's not too long but i I'm still thinking like 23, like it's not, I'm just not, yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not ever going to put my hopes on square coming out with a game in like a reasonable amount of time. Sure. No, I, I, I agree. I, that's what I was saying. Like, I'd love for it to come out sooner. Um, I feel like a lot of the, the character models have basically been done. The art style, there's a lot of asset work that's already been done and going forward, I feel like they've done a lot of the hard work already and uh, not to belittle what they're going to do, but a lot of the hard work's been done if they kept keep the same engine, which I think would be fine. Maybe work on some optimization and everything, but I feel like this this could go into the next generation fine and then um, have those optimizations as you come out with part two, part three, part four, however many there are, when eventually there's a, re a release of the collection that you transfer all those optimizations. So you make those optimizations go all over and, high, you know, more high def uh or i don't think this game really needs ray tracing but make it pretty um the part where, there is like one scene where uh he looks in a mirror and yeah. it doesn't look good yeah uh but you know when it comes to optimization mm -hmm. xbox probably could still work on some optimization <laughs> give it to you um that's all they talked about this uh the, the two buzzwords by the way as we pivot over to the xbox event that happened today the two buzzwords were 
optimized and looks it's always going to look best on xbox series x and the other buzzword that they kept they're pushing game pass hard mm -hmm. and which is good i will say i am not after this presentation i am not more keen on buying an xbox series x but i'm like this close to grabbing game pass because game pass awesome. there are so many I, I actually know two or three people who have an xbox one and game pass and they haven't bought a game in like over a year because there's so many there's so many games that are part of your subscription and they're new games like new first party games that are just already ready uh everything here is going it was it was every game right every game is going to be on game pass if i'm not mistaken uh or at least I believe the, so so they, they kept pushing it might have that. Been a few third party ones that, yeah that were but there was a point there was definitely a point yeah. in there where they were like every single one of these is is there yeah so obviously new game pass and that we could we could speculate on what x cloud by the way if you're watching right now this is the new halo gameplay uh, uh going which i looked at it and i said this looks great it looks like halo it looks pretty don't get me wrong um it's very halo it's nothing to me that was like a oh, whole mind-blowing uh other than how good it looks but it, it was not game changing and halo doesn't really need that in my opinion um i i'm i think i'm in on the game pass i may not be in on buying an xbox series x but i think i'm in on game pass uh with the um with being able to play these games and not have to buy them uh and play whatever i mean there's so many so many games available on that um between that and x cloud which is what i was going to say we could speculate on how that's going to be bundled with like maybe an uh a gold pre uh, i don't know what they're going to call it like some type of old xbox ultimate pass thing where you'll have x cloud and this oh well, that who knows because there's already xbox ultimate yeah which comes whatever with they're gonna game yeah. PC. yeah xbox and i think xbox gold yeah so they're yeah we could speculate on i think there's gonna have they're they're going to fold a couple of those and we're going to have x cloud um as part of one of those subscriptions there would be a like penultimate one where you can stream to you can stream it uh through x cloud which if you have that and game pass game over stadia game over at this point i mean that's already it's already happened it's already again. <laughs> so, like, Stadia's putting in quarters in the machine to try and save it off, but it's one of those like yeah. Simpson situations where like you're just gonna get beat by the boss anyway, and then you're just gonna play quarters until you beat him. Um, Game Pass is amazing. Yeah, it's the best value in gaming. Period. Right now, there's there's uh, if you have Ultimate, there's 375 games between uh, PC and Xbox. If you just have Xbox, there's 270 something. If you just have PC, there's a hundred something. Um, that's a lot of games that you get. Like PC is stupidly priced right now. If you have a game, if you have a, any, if you have a PC that is worth its salt, you should be doing Game Pass because it's only four ninety nine a month right now, and that's going to change at some point. Yeah. Um, uh, there's some games in here that I definitely want to talk about. Halo yeah. for sure. Uh, the thing though with Halo is like that's one of the only games we saw gameplay on yes and that's that was disappointing that was what i was saying leading up to this like i need to see more than halo Same. um and don't get me wrong halo looks fun it looked they looked like they're calling back to some og halo and i'm excited about that i'm i'm ready to play it yeah i'll play it on it yeah yeah i same here um I, I felt the same way because you kept hearing like right before it where it's like the next the next game trailer you're gonna see is all in engine and I thought okay it's good. still it's still gonna it's still not gonna be gameplay um, that's going to tell me how good the engine can look but it's not gonna tell me how the game feels at this point we might as well be watching trailers to CGI movies. And if you want to do that, there's nothing wrong with that. This is about games. And when you have games that I, I purposely brought Forza up here because the games, uh, racing games have always been about like, how pretty can, how pretty can we get this thing to look? How, how the, yeah. the reflections, everything that looks like it, it looks so realistic every single time they have a new one, um, which is not like, again, not my cup of tea, but so pretty. Um, there's there's some in here that I want to talk about as well. We could we can kind of go through. Um, 
uh, first one is Everwild, which I thought, mm-hmm. uh, I, I, again, something that, uh, you know, didn't take my breath away, but like it, the, the art style, almost this, you know, the cell shading of this made it kind of smoothen out kind of how they did with Borderlands. Um, uh, it reminded me of like that with like, kind of like avatar and some other things kind of blended in together. Um, I'm down, I'm down for this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'd say that as I yell. That's yeah. my fault. Uh, it's been a long day, but I uh, like you. I, you know, cell shading to me always looks looks good. I I like Rare mm-hmm. as a studio. I like to see a Thieves a lot. You know, obviously Rare's been around a long time, but most recently mm-hmm. they did see a Thieves. Um, I I'm wondering about the multiplayer aspect of sure. it because you know me in multiplayer games. Like I played Sea of Thieves a lot of it, but I don't really have time for it these days. So how much am I going to get to play? kind of by myself yeah. uh you know that's that's just where i'm kind of at so i'm wondering how big of a multiplayer game since it's being advertised that way um but it looks good yeah. i'm down yeah i'm also down with tell me why for different reasons so we got Heck yeah yes, <laughs> so new game. It. This is, this is, uh, yeah yeah i hope yeah this all all about it um i know this is this is a uh, uh the Telltale esque uh, uh, game series. I know you're a fan of these. Um, well, it's made by Don't Nod, which made Life yeah, is Strange, yeah, yeah. which was my game of 2016. So yeah, yeah, I was, I was gonna. I don't know why. Like, I was trying to say, trying to think of Life is Strange, but again, long day. Um, yeah. yeah, but the the story based games, decisions, uh, character, like really deep into characters. Um, I'm I'm down with it. Uh, and again showing that like these games can still look good yeah it doesn't look exactly photorealistic but close enough in my opinion um to to carry it uh, to carry it over um then they yeah, have the only thing that stinks about this is that it's it's being published by xbox game studio so don't not developed it and isn't self-publishing and so that does make it exclusive so just get game pass and play it that way um yep. or or buy it to support the developer your choice um Ori, we get, we're getting some more uh, Ori, uh, so happy about that. We get uh, optimized Ori will win, and the Will of the Wisps, optimized for Xbox Series X. Um, 120 FPS is what they are showing here, and I think it's funny trying to like the fact that it like look at this like kind of like slow yeah. motion that, that if you're watching the video, but go back and watch the video. And, like this is slow motion. It's like you're trying to show me. Yeah. And what's funny to me is somebody else pointed this out during one of the streams I was watching. They were like, here you are kind of bashing on 60 FPS, which is that thing that, you know, games can't even achieve regularly right now. And you're like, screw, screw 60. We got 120. Baby. Yeah. But, you know, it's it's still uh, I, I've, I've started the second one. Um, mm-hmm. I and probably not going to finish it but it is fun it's they've added a lot of different side scrolling and uh, zelda qualities which mm-hmm. is interesting um but cool you know hdr ori yeah yeah happy about that and outer worlds which you totally called by the way yeah uh, dlc for sure dlc outer worlds happy about that um another one that i i want to see i want to see how this plays i want to see how a lot of these play when they do move to the next generation as we are uh, we are getting backwards compatibility um, overall, and I say this as we're only a few in. Like I like the Xbox presentation of of the games they were showing. It was quality, but it still doesn't give me a reason to buy the Xbox Series X because I already own an Xbox One X. Uh, if you buy, if you already own an Xbox One or Xbox One X, you don't have a reason to buy one for a while. Um, just get Game Pass. Yeah, and the thing that I didn't call though was was uh, Obsidian working on not one but two more titles in addition to <laughs> DLC for Outer Worlds, which is is crazy to me. This grounded game, uh, I'm not a big on like it seems kind of tower defensey or at least like survival, and that's not really for me. But I will say if you're gonna do something like this, it's a cool setting yeah. to do it in um so for those of you who aren't watching it's kind of like think of like honey i shrunk the kids Mm -hmm. so you're like outside in your front lawn or your Mm -hmm. backyard or whatever surviving against you know all the stuff that's out there your spiders your cockroaches your ants and all that stuff and you're building you're like 
I then pair it with like a Daisy or like a uh, uh, H1Z1 sure. type situation. Yeah, I would say like that and a little bit of like, I feel like Fallout Shelter a little bit in regards to yeah. like, uh, not necessarily the simulation style, but um, really uh, interesting and creative and artful. But yeah, uh, I did get some Honey, I Shrunk the Kids vibes from it because, you know, it's so it's so iconic. So why wouldn't you think of that? At least if you're around our age. Yeah, exactly. More importantly, avowed. Yeah, more power. Okay, <laughs> way more important. Way more importantly, come on. Okay, yeah, one hundred percent. Obsidian RPGs, baby. Yeah. Um, so I I had zoned out a little bit when this one came came on, so I didn't get to um, to take a look oh. at it. So so tell me tell me why you like it. Uh, I mean, it's Obsidian and it's an RPG. That's why I like it. Uh, that's all I really need at this point. We were we didn't see um, a whole lot, but what it is is that it's uh magical um it's it's medieval setting it's first person and so it to me i'm thinking we're gonna have to me whenever i was watching this mm -hmm. i was thinking you know how they did fallout and then they did outer worlds right yeah. we got that vibe now act like obsidian is making a elder scrolls game and that's where we're at i'm, I'm digging with, that uh, yeah. And so if you like you some Elder Scrolls, at least th that's the first vibes I got yeah. on this. That I'm I'm down then. Uh I I downloaded the trailer for us to to watch. I was multitasking a lot today um and didn't get to watch this one. So yeah, I'm I'm down with this cuz what they've done when it came like you said what they did uh when it came to uh when it came to Fallout um I absolutely love it. So um We'll see how it goes. I'm not going to say it's going to be a Skyrim killer, but yeah. Uh, no yeah. release date on this one still, right? Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, yeah it's too too uh, far out. Like I said, with that, like, that's three games that Obsidian's currently working on, which yeah. is very impressive for one uh, studio recently purchased by, by Xbox. Uh, I don't know where you would like to go next. There's a couple of these that I just don't care about. But Yeah, I can bounce around. Uh, we had, uh, as dusk falls, uh, probably something that I'll, uh, that I'll dive in and check out a little bit more. Um, uh, Psychonauts is another one that I that I think is probably more up my alley than yours. I don't know if you played the you Jack Black. In there, yeah, you know, ha so. very happy about that. Um, I'm, I'm dancing around one because I know there's one that you and I are more excited about. Uh, Stalker Two, sure. I'm excited about. Um, again, something that's totally up my alley. Something that I could see uh, me and Whitney playing, uh, as well as Dark Tide Warhammer because yeah. i'm waiting to get into a warhammer game i'm getting into warhammer period i'm like i should like this but it hasn't hooked me the have universe hasn't hooked out me too. i have not you should okay because this is very much like that um so the vern 2 is a current game that that is out it's actually even on sale right now uh with with different uh summer sales but okay. so think same word right mm -hmm. tide mm -hmm. now we're in dark tide so um vermintide 2 is apparently one of the best like team shooters that have, that have come around um it's it's very similar to a left for dead okay. style thing but not comedic like this isn't comedic like left for dead 2 was sure. it but it has that like progression to it yeah and i have a feeling that dark tide is going to be very similar so i would check out if you're thinking about, you're like, hey, does Dark Tide, uh, Dark Tide look good? Check out Vermintide too. See if it's your thing. Um, but if it's as good as Vermintide two mm -hmm. is known to be, then this game's going to be good too. Okay. Okay. Well, then I I got something to add to my list. Um, the other ones that I the, the other one that I knew is on my list. I don't know, and I don't know, but I know it's not probably on yours, but is the medium. Um, I've been excited about this since they announced it uh, a while back. Again, creepy. Um, I don't know how grotesque this is going to get, but definitely horror or suspense. Um, so this is up my alley. Um, this I, is definitely one where there was a next gen feel to it. Yes, yes. I got. I felt like this. To me, it felt like uh, a re the the new Resident Evil Seven uh, mixed with like kind of a little bit of Silent Hill, uh, like but then next gen. So. 
Um, they, they basically said that this game isn't possible on current hardware because of the the hard drive and everything because the game is running like two things simultaneously and that is interesting to yeah. me uh i let you're right though it's not really up my alley at all and so it's going to be one of those things that i probably watch somebody else yeah experience but the fact that you could have the idea of having two games running at the same time kind of like a long time uh, alongside each other is mm -hmm. really cool yeah so and that, that's what i think is gonna be really interesting about it and some very different obviously tonally but the the op the the advantage you have with this hardware not just of what you see but what it's doing in the back end very much like what we saw with the uh the jack and dexter um I was it Jack and Dexter? What am I? The the next gen one that Ratchet. was Ratchet and Clank. Sorry, Ratchet and Clank uh, one that was announced, and the uh, ability to switch between uh, worlds and just instantaneously without a fake loading screen uh, situation going on at all, I thought was really cool. Uh, I'm still trying to get Whitney to talk uh, talked into streaming with me or streaming in general because I think that like when she plays these games, she is really entertaining. Um, so maybe I can talk her into it. Maybe. I, don't th I can't get Cassie doesn't like being on camera. So oh, I, said be, just the, you I just said audio. Like, I'm fine with is, audio. Just, like, the, watching her, like, walk by The Last of Us 2, and, like, anytime she would actually sit there and watch me play it, mm -hmm. like, I would just hear, like, mm-mm, 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 and so, you know, imagine that for an entire, <laughs> an you entire uh, playthrough. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I mean, if she if she mixed it up, like put a couple, you know, gross or something like that, like then you know it can be it can be uh, obviously uh, entertaining. Whitney also yeah. she loves scary stuff, uh, and she, and it does freak her out, which which can be entertaining as well. So um, one that I, I, I on to the ones that I do think that you're um, more interested in Hellblade two. We've been talking about this. They, we only got to see a little bit of it. And if I'm not mistaken, everything that we saw here, we'd already seen in the previous trailer. It was just a recut and truncated version of the trailer from... I, mm -hmm. I would have to go back and look. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm, I'm relatively sure. It, it, it's showing off Unreal 5, which yeah. is cool. Uh, but again, gameplay, bros. We're still waiting for it. Still waiting for it. Um, I want to see it. Um, so w like there were, there are a couple of the things here. I don't know if you want to talk about any, any of them. Uh, uh, I'll mention that it's cool that PSO two is getting completely redone. Um, it's a game that's been around for like a long time. Yeah. Um, but they're, they're completely like they're rebuilding it. They're making it modern. Um, I'm excited about that. Uh, the thing is, is that I don't like that it's coming to Xbox first, but that's just personal. Yep. I wish it was going to PlayStation at the same time, um, but they haven't announced that yet. But the game, I'm an MMO kind of guy. Me I don't too. know if I'm going to get into it. It looks gorgeous, yeah. what they're what they're redoing it. The game didn't look bad before, but it looks good. Yeah. And so that was cool. Um, but it's a game that's been around for a while, so I'm really excited to see what they do with it to kind of bring it into the 2020s. 20 um, years. 20 years, man. Wow. Um, when did World of Warcraft come out? No, PSO2 <laughs> is 2013, I think. It's 2013? Uh, okay, so. sorry. It said 20th anniversary. I was like, I was yeah, like this can't PSO be. Okay. Okay. It's been around a long time. Okay. Fantasy Star Online, if you recall, was uh, uh, Dreamcast. You could actually right. play online through dreamcast which was which was pretty crazy um i remember booting that game up after it was dead like after the servers were killed not understanding and this was when i was a kid i'm like what's going on like yeah. why why is there no one here and it was because it was on dreamcast and nobody was there uh, so sad it's just a random memory that you brought out of me but <laughs> i uh i like how i like how good it looks yeah. I'm, I'm excited that uh i'm excited that microsoft is delving more into rpgs this isn't the first one but they're trying to get some of that that japanese yeah. play they, they're not big over there and so to focusing on some jrpgs i think is a good call yeah the the 360 actually had some some pretty good pretty interesting uh, uh rpgs and we didn't get a lot of them with the xbox one so no i i agree getting this with uh getting the next generation uh drumming up some rpg love is, is really cool um the other one i guess i was interested in is the gunk before we talk about the thing that you predicted by the way um 
I thought the gunk looked cool. Um, I don't know enough about it. Again, give me some gameplay so I know more of what what you're doing. What uh, you know, I'm like, this looks cool, but 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 what's the gameplay? I mean, we got a little bit here. Sorry, I didn't realize there was a little there was a little bit of gameplay. Um, for some reason, I was thinking that uh, it was the only it was only trailer. So, um, okay, now that I'm seeing gameplay, I don't know. It's fine. I mean, it's pretty, but I just I don't know. It looks kind of repetitive. Um, I'm going with fun. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. But you know what's not fine? It's Fable. Fable is wonderful. And yeah, boy. You you what called it. You called it. I had it on my wish list, but you called it. I wanted this. And this has been this has been a series that's been it's a great IP. It's a great exclusive property for Xbox and getting Fable 4. Very happy. Um they just called it Fable, by the way, so we Fable. don't know. We're called yeah. going for with a soft reboot, if we're going with like a full reboot. Man. Don't know. I don't know. I don't know either, but I, I love I love the trailer because you're like, oh, this is so whimsical. What is it? Oh, like, I, I love that tonal shift. I thought that was that was uh, funny and, in my opinion, you know, kind of quirky like Fable could be. Um, agreed. Yeah, like you said, they're just calling it Fable. Um I, it could end up being um, could end up being a, a, re, a soft reboot, um, or they just don't want to call it Fable Four. I don't know. I don't know what they're going to call it. We got no info other than this this little trailer, which is repeating. Um, I'm down. I wish I'd seen more, but it's nice to know that this is on the horizon. That we're that it's not 100 uh, percent wishful thinking. That uh, someone's right. working on it. I have a feeling you're still going to be able to play it on your Xbox Series X, or on your Xbox One X because it says optimized for Series X again. So, and, I'm, and I keep wondering, are we going to ever hit a point where the Lockhart gets in, announced? And so this game, this game's not this game's too good for One X, but but works on whatever the, whatever the Lockhart is. Sure. Like there's there's still something about they keep saying this optimized for Series X thing that I just don't know what the messaging is like because i I think it's going to be on pc too as all the xbox exclusive are so are they saying that they're not optimizing it for pc i don't get that label that they're using other than that they're saying we're still bringing games out which they already said to do does that mean we're getting fable in the next 18 to 24 months that's what i think i think we're getting fable next year is what i think is going to happen i think we're going to get fable like mid to late next year um and it will be available on Xbox One and the Xbox Series X and Lockhart. The the reason they use the optimized one usually is for multiplats, but in this case, it's not a multiplat. So I think we're going to get it. I'd say it's going to be it's at least a year out, but we're going to get Fable next year, in my opinion. Yeah, uh, I I hope so because I don't know what your overall feelings are. It, like this wasn't a bad showing. No. This was a good. This this was what we wanted during the first Xbox showing. Um, now, I'm still asking for gameplay. I'm still. I want. Yeah. I want. I want gameplay. The thing here is, though, um, what they've shown is that what Phil said that we saw nine out of fifteen studios that they own five new games out of out of those nine uh, were previously unannounced. So everybody's working on something. Everybody's hard at work. They're setting themselves up. Yeah. To predict, what not predict? <laughs> this is this is one hundred percent fact. Here's what's going to happen here, people. Yeah, you're going to get your Series X. Mm-hmm. You're going to have Game Pass. Mm-hmm. You're going to have a ton of one one Xbox One games. Man, these names suck. Yeah, you're going to have a ton of Xbox One games available on Series X. So if you never jumped in on the Xbox One generation, cool. Series X is a great piece of hardware. One hundred percent. You're not going to get a lot of next gen your first two years. It's going to be very similar to the PS4, where we're like, "Where's the exclusives?" Yes, like, we got Bloodborne, right? It's just they got you Halo. Yes. So think about Halo, like in a, in the sense of like a Bloodborne. Like, okay, here's Bloodborne. Here's a fantastic AAA game. Here's all your third party crap. That yeah. you know, here's your Assassin's Creeds. Here's your uh, your sports games. Those are all still coming. Don't worry though. At Microsoft's working on stuff. That's where they're at right now is that they're showing you Correct. in the next two years it's going to happen. But like everything here except for like Halo yeah. that looked next gen is not 
is not around like tell me why is, that's not next gen that's episodic that's coming i think later this year yeah. but like your your crossfire that we didn't even really talk that's, about that's your, right here, yeah. your 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 fable yeah. your uh avowed tetris your Hellblade. effect i forgot to even i forgot to even talk about that tetris effect sorry, sorry yeah, it's whatever yeah you're you're ever wild all those games are further down the line and that's absolutely okay because they do have game pass and that's why they were pushing it mm -hmm. so hard i just um i really still think that they're they're not they're not telling you to upgrade yet and as soon as they talk about xcloud which is the reason why i don't think they are talking about xcloud yeah. at all it's because they still want you to buy it but as soon as xcloud gets talked about it's in beta right now on ios i want it I got yeah. the controller. Let's go. Yeah. Like I'm, I'll, I'll 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 play it here on my PC, where I don't have a great graphics card, but I have a great internet connection, so I could run, uh, run sure, run easily in that. I, I think they did solid. I'm not I'm not downing their presentation at all. I think that they could have done more. I yeah. think they could have shown us more gameplay, and I think they could have just said like, here's why you need to buy a Series X. Yeah. And I don't think that they that they really have that. No, they. I don't think they have a reason to right now. And I think they're dancing around the fact that there really isn't a reason. They have a new console coming out. They are phasing out, as we talked about, they fa they're phasing out the Xbox One X. They're phasing out the Xbox One S Sad Edition because they they were like well we need people to continue to buy our consoles we don't have a reason for them to buy the new hotness when why buy a series x when you could buy an xbox one x which would probably be discounted if the series x and xbox one x were both on the shelf together your xbox one x is going to be discounted and you could go well, i can get this i've never had an xbox i can get this and i'm good for the next two years at least actually probably more than that this is this is a wider gap than we've ever had in regards to um, crossing generations. This is a new world. Backwards compatibility is not not just like something people want. It's almost required. So I think that this is going to be the biggest gap we've seen in the generation. Uh, PS4 to sell even more consoles even after the PS5 comes out. That's my prediction. Not more than it's I... sold already, but yeah. No, I 100 percent agree. Yeah. You still have it. You still have a good two years, and so look for those Black Friday deals this year. And if, if there's literally like 2,000 PS4 games, yeah. there's somewhere around the same Xbox games, and get Game Pass if you don't. Yeah. Um, because you literally don't need anything other than Game Pass unless there's like a sports game yeah. or something that you want. 100 percent. Go do that. Always check us out on Facebook and YouTube. If you're subscribed to us on YouTube, thank you. If you're a podcast listener, thank you so much. Make sure that you you know interact with us a little bit. We got a lot of listeners out there who uh, who don't get to you know. We want this to be a two way street. Tell us what you think about Xbox versus Xbox Series X versus PlayStation Five. Tell us what you think about this console generation. And is there something you want us to do like a deep dive on in regards to uh, the this generation or the previous uh, generation as we're coming up on the eighth console generation? Do you, would you like us to do a recap of the seventh i think we should do a recap of the seventh uh maybe a little bit of the sixth and the feeling of going sixth to seventh and now seventh to eighth i think it'd be really cool anyways let us know in the comments we'll see you next time Goodbye.